Yo, what's up, what's up, y'all? It's your boy AD, and that's all day. I'm in a spot. Today, we're doing another SmackDown review. This is for June 25th, 2021. I know I'm a little late. Today is Monday, but, I mean, not too far off. I mean, honestly, I didn't really jump to this so quickly because, I don't know, man, like, it's, it's starting to happen again where Raw is starting to get kind of good, but SmackDown is starting to, like, fall off a little bit. Like, for example, as you can see, this is the headline. The headline is, uh, Edge returns with his sights firmly set on Roman Reigns. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of the fact this happened at the very end of the show, okay? And, yeah, this was a little shocking. I'm going to get to it in a second. But when it compared to the whole show and what really happened, you you'll see what I'm saying. You see, they trying to hype this. But let's go on. Let's get into the show. So first, right, we had Bayley and Seth Rollins uh, defeated Bianca Belair and Cesaro in a mixed tag team match. So right off out the gate, it, it's kind of repetitive because we just seen them go against each other in Hell in a Cell, Bayley and uh, you know, and Bianca. And here they go fighting again. So what does so what does the WWE do? They say, okay, well, let's mix another beef into it. Let's put Cesaro on Bianca's team, which really doesn't make any sense at all. And we'll put Seth Rollins on Bayley's team, you know, just to try to add something to it with a tag match when obviously it's just going to be focused on the rivalries, especially between Bianca and Bayley. So, yeah, and whatever. They got the win or whatever. Not really that interested in this match because, again, it's, it's, it's like a rematch. It's basically a replay. That pretty much... Then we had, right, showing that, oh my god, I mean, SmackDown just got ridiculous, it really did. Then we had the uh, coronation of King, right, King, what, Nakamura, King, King Suke Nakamura. So, basically, you know him and uh, King Corbin been having his whole beef, and damn, that's messed up too. Look, they, they showing King Corbin right there, man. And that's something that happened in the episode, too. He was very disappointed and sad. And that, that was kind of crazy because we never see King like that. But he was sad because Shinsuke gets his crown and he gets to get away with it and keep it. Like, that is kind of bogus, you know. Shinsuke always... I, I'm in here drinking coffee. Shinsuke always was getting help from this dude right here. That that was another beef that was just getting old and not really good. And then they did this whole thing where they basically crowned him as the new king. I know that sounds pretty crazy, but again, not really that interesting. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Then we had Big E defeat Apollo Crews to qualify for Money in the Bank. So here goes another rematch, you guys. Another I went I went and I looked up this one thing and they literally said I think since the beginning of this year that they said Apollo Crews and the Big E went against each other at least fourteen times. Are you serious? Fourteen times? Oh my gosh, man. But anyways now I think now this match was slightly more interesting than the other ones only because it was a money in the bank qualifying match because I still want to see you know who gets into a money in the bank but it, it still was the same old same old and I'm tired of Commander Aziz like I, I don't like Commander Aziz he's not exciting putting them on Apollo with Apollo Crews it's just it's, just, it's like they tried whatever with Apollo to give him a gimmick basically I mean, it's okay as a heel, but still not really that interesting to me, Apollo. I've seen some better heels than that. I mean, so Big E gets the win. Good for Big E. At least he's in the uh, qualifying match. Good for him. Then we had Carmella was named Money in the Bank ladder match. Right. Liv Morgan defends Car. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Let me read a little bit of this because I, I remember this now. And I see they trying to get Liv Morgan some play. Good. It said, when Sonya Deville named Carmella as the first woman to represent SmackDown, the Money in the Bank ladder match, Liv Morgan emerged to point out that she beat 
the self-proclaimed most beautiful woman in all WWE. Last week before shockingly slapping Princess Mella to the camp. Really? They're calling her Princess Mella now? Oh my god. Carmella is so whack, man. I'm actually liking the fact that Lil Morgan is getting a little more push now. But that is kind of bogus. How the hell you going to name uh, Carmella to be in the Money in the Bank match? Like, how are y'all going to do that? She didn't even do anything. Why Why? Have it, why does everybody else get to play a match but Carmella? Oh, you get to get in. So, yes, uh, uh, Liv Morgan has her right to come out there and talk her shit, which she did. I'm like, wow, Liv Morgan shooting promos. This actually was a little interesting, but it's still kind of messed up because it's another rematch. I mean, we really didn't see them win against each other like three weeks in a row. See, this is why SmackDown is starting to fall off. You're just doing, it's like y'all relying too much on that Roman Reigns story, and y'all not really putting much into everything else. Jimmy Uso defeats Dolph Ziggler. So, right, now, Jimmy Uso is now clicking up with Roman, right? Jay's still gone. He disappeared. Nobody knows where he's at. They even tried to hit him up in the episode to see where he was, and they they couldn't really find out where he was. So, Jay is still on that I don't want to deal with y'all type stuff, as you can see. Hold on one second. Let me see how much time I've been doing this. Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Don't want to make this one too long. Um, so Roman was like, oh, if you want to be my right-hand man like Jimmy was, you got to prove it. So it's basically the same old shit. I kind of feel like they let this story collapse. Because this story was really getting good. When Roman and Jay and when Jimmy came back, it started getting interesting. But it, it made no sense for Jimmy to come out there and say all that truth. And do all of that just to turn his back and then just ride with Roman. And I, I kind of felt like they let that story go right there. Right there. Because now Jimmy is basically doing the same thing as Jay. So here we go again, SmackDown. Y'all just getting repetitive. Jimmy literally is doing the same thing as Jay. And then what make it even more worse is the fact that they're twins. So you can't add no variety. Like, man, I'm going to keep it real. I like the better when the Usos and Roman Reigns were doing their own thing. I'm a, This whole meshing them with the family nonsense, it's just starting to get boring. It really is. But, all right, Jimmy, it's some other stuff that happened, too. Some promos and stuff that really weren't that interesting to me either. But let's keep going. Yeah, so Jimmy ended up beating him, though, whatever. Dolph Ziggler. Now, the match was pretty good, though. It wasn't really a bad match, but still, like, who cares? Y'all, like, literally threw Dolph Ziggler in that shit, too. Okay, now let's get to the end. Let, let's get to the main, because to this, I guess, was the most exciting part of the show, which irritated me. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Because in the beginning of the show, they was like, oh, Roman Reigns. They was like, oh, Roman Reigns is going to shoot his, uh, he's going to do his address. Like, they always got Roman Reigns acting like he all of that. But again, he barely does matches and he likes to sneak people. And he uses his cousins to do his dirty work. So anyways, he comes into a ring. He's talking all this shit as usual. And then Edge pops out. Now, that was a little shocking. Because we ain't seen Edge since WrestleMania. I will admit, that was shocking. And Edge is back, man. He is back on his killer mode type shit, okay? He came out with some ruthless aggression, and he started kicking ass. Edge came out there and started beating ass, though. You see, he even fuck. You see, he even put Roman head in the chair and basically revenge, right? Revenge for what Roman did to Edge. I'll read a little bit of this to y'all says, one week after making history against Rey Mysterio and SmackDown's first ever Hell in the Cell match, Universal Champion Roman Reigns and his special counsel Paul Heyman emerged to carry out a state of the Universal Championship address. After Heyman ran down the list of superstars that the head of the table had overcame and claimed that had wiped out the entire division, Reigns was set to take over the mic. They out of nowhere, WWE Hall of Fame <laughs> and suddenly returned for the first time since losing the Reigns in a triple threat match. Right. Yep. The Frenzy Ed unleashed a brutal attack on the head of the table that, what was that? culminated 
with an earth shattering spear before Edge could hit the concerto on Reigns. However, Jimmy Uso emerged to suffer in his cousin's place. Moments later, Edge speared Uso through the barricade and began screaming for Reigns. So, I mean, that was kind of interesting. It was, because it's like, yes, come on, man, bro. Somebody get in Roman Reigns' ass. Can somebody please get in his ass? Now, what sucks about it is the fact that it's Edge again, and we already seen him get beat. And Edge ain't been here since WrestleMania. So, again, Edge ain't been around since, like, March, April. So, he ain't been doing nothing to build himself up. I mean, now, the way he came out, yeah, that was interesting. But is it going to make people feel like it's something to look forward to? That's the question. Because they're going to have to do something with Edge. They can't just be having them come out doing little shit like this and don't get no like wins under the belt. You know, what y'all going to just set up a pay-per-view match automatically? What y'all going to do? Because I still feel like, hey, man, y'all need somebody new or somebody. Somebody. I don't care. Oh, Edge. Oh, We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I would love to see Edge take Roman out, but I just don't see that happening because Edge is more towards the end of his career. You know, it's it's hard to believe somebody like Edge, who's been around since pretty much the 90s, right, uh, now is champion in 2021. If And if they did do it, it won't be for long. And I think a lot of other people could see that too. So we'll see what happens this upcoming Friday. But honestly, I'm going to be looking more for it into Raw because Raw kind of has been a little bit more popping lately. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I had to get this review out here for you guys. And I'll be back soon to do the Raw review. I'm going to try to get it out by tomorrow, early tomorrow. So I'll see you guys later, okay? Peace out.